Justice Maez is a trailblazer for Latinas in the law. She has served on the bench for 30 years, the first 17 years as a trial judge, and the last 13 years as a justice in New Mexico. Not only has she come to such great heights within the profession, but she came from humble beginnings as well. Born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, her family has been in New Mexico for generations. But she was also the first in her family to aspire to become a lawyer. When asked why she became a lawyer, she said it was very simple. I watched Perry Mason on TV. I saw that he could help people, and I wanted to do that with my life. Justice Maya's efforts to improve the justice system since becoming a judge have been amazing. She has served as numerous committees and commissions on judicial improvement, including co-chairing the New Mexico Commission on Access to Justice and creating the Criminal Justice Task Force to address inequalities in the Public Defender Agency. She has also served as Supreme Court Liaison in the Court Improvement Project. She received her undergraduate degree and law degree from the University of New Mexico. But more importantly, Justice Maez, Petra, as she likes to be called by her friends, was one of the first two Latinas to graduate from law school in New Mexico. She was also admitted to the bar that same year and quickly went on to become a, an attorney in the Legal Aid Society and did family law. Her life's experiences have been incredible. She has raised four children as a single parent after her husband's death in 1983. And she is very proud of her children and her three granddaughters. She also is looking forward to uh, working very hard and doing some cooking in her spare time in her new, newly renovated kitchen, as she tells me, because she loves to cook Mexican food. I can't imagine whose door I'll be knocking on next time I'm in Santa Fe. <laughs> Without further ado, just to Petra Jimenez Myers. Suitable candidates, 
Cruz Reynoso, and Leo Romero. The dean said that we needed to pick one of those two gentlemen, and we uh, suggested to the dean that they were both outstanding professors, and we suggested that he hired both. He did that. It was a wise choice because Cruz Reynoso became the justice of the California Supreme Court, and Leo Romero became dean of the School of Law, our first Hispanic dean. One of Malta's projects also was recruitment of more Hispanic law students, and the law school paid our expenses so we could travel the state and recruit more students uh, to attend law school. In 1981, I was appointed a trial judge by Governor Bruce King. During my tenure, I was elected chief judge. I had the opportunity to sit on the chief judge's council, which included the New Mexico Supreme Court justices. I became frustrated with how slow changes were being made regarding the administration of the judiciary. Former Chief Justice Dan Sosa, who received the Spirit of Excellence Award in 2009, would tell me, Placencia Petrita, which means have patience. I didn't want to wait 60 years. I'll explain 60 in a bit. So I decided that I needed to help on the Supreme Court, and I ran for the Supreme Court and was elected in 1998. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my court, the New Mexico Supreme Court. There are five members. In 1998, when I joined the court, I joined two Hispanics, Joseph Baca and Patricio Serna. The minority Hispanics became the majority on the court. I also joined one woman, Pamela Minzner. Other member of the court was Jean Franchini of Italian descent, and so it was, it was a very unique court. Since the establishment of the New Mexico Supreme Court in 1912, there have been a total of 65 justices. Eight of those have been Hispanic. There have only been three women. I like that I get counted twice. <laughs> <laughs> we all hear the majority of cases, except for some special writs that are heard by a panel of three justices. One man, the panel was Justices Baca, Serna, and myself. As we were going into the courtroom, Justice Baca remarked, do you think they are ready for the little brown court? <laughs> it was truly a historic day. Justice Baca has retired because we have joined by another Hispanic, Edward Chavez. I am so proud to be a member of this unique court. It has been an outstanding experience. The New Mexico Supreme Court has demonstrated a strong commitment to diversity. We work hard to have diversity on our committees and commissions especially on the Judicial Selection Commission, which makes recommendations to the governor when judicial vacancies occur. The obstacle we face is that not enough attorneys of color and women apply, and we really encourage everybody to really apply for these positions. I will highlight a case we decided in 2001 that I am especially proud of. The New Mexico Constitution provides the right of non-English speaking jurors to sit upon juries. In the Pacheco case, a juror was provided an interpreter during the trial. During deliberations, the interpreter accompanied the non-English speaking juror into the jury room. The defendant appealed his conviction, claiming there was error because there was a 13th person in the jury room. We held that there was no error, provided that the trial court first requires the interpreter to take a special oath that he will, or she will not participate in or interfere with the jury's deliberations. I want to take you back to 1912 when New Mexico became a state. This year we are celebrating our 100th birthday. The road to statehood was not easy and took 60 years. Why? Because there were too many Mexicans and Spanish was preserved at, in our bilingual constitution. Catholicism was the primary religion. The concern was that we would hold allegiance to the Pope and not the President of the United States. And then there was the concern that the territory was too violent. This was the era of Billy the Kid. The state leaders were not deterred and kept trying. Like my state, I have faced challenges and find uh, challenges in my path. To become a lawyer I, it was a dream I had very young. When I told people I wanted to be a lawyer, they told me I could not become a lawyer. People told me politely that I was too short to be a lawyer. <laughs> I guess in retrospect, it was a nice way of saying, saying I could not be a lawyer because there was a stereotype about lawyers. Lawyers were tall and white and men. I was short and brown and female. 
Diversity, like anything worth having, requires effort, effort to learn about and, and to respect the differences, to be compassionate with another, to cherish our own identity, and accept unconditionally the same in all others. I applaud the work of the Commission on Racial and Ethnic Diversity in the profession because in the words of Justice Lewis Powell, the nation's future depends upon leaders trained through right exposure to the ideas and mores of students as diverse as this nation. I am very honored to receive the Spirit of Excellence Award and to be among the many outstanding and diverse individuals who have been recognized for the past that they have created for others. Thank you so very much.